Hey everyone, I'm back. So what we got today? So as you can see, it's like 90. It's I'm, I'm like I'm like this, and it's like 90 degrees outside, and I'm also and I also usually sleep in a very closed off room with almost no air circulation. <clears throat> I'm feeling a little uh, off today. Well, not off today. It's just that um, it's well, it's hot. So okay. So the I so uh, ninth edition is gonna has been announced weeks ago. Has been announced week a few weeks ago, and finally we're getting well not finally. I've been I'm finally I, I am finally doing a video a, a more video another video about it, and because it's like a, a lot of new stuff, new rules, new how, new ways on how the the system works, and I'm like and I and, I, and I'm liking it, most of it, and. I'm just wanting to, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the highlights of what we're, because I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the highlights of what um, really piqued my interest <clears throat> and what can really be beneficial for my army. And I'm also going to try and do some other things, to uh, talk about some other things at what they, at what uh, GW has been, got planned for this whole thing. Now, what I'm going to do, and I know a lot of people are kind of, are going to be, kind of, are likely going to be kind of against the idea. I'm going to get the Indomit. I'm going to try and get the Indomitus box set because it will allow me, because it will allow me to try out the new models and run and run simulation, run battle sim sims, so that I can figure out, oh, you know, what's what's a good unit. But let me. But I try to be clear. I'm not letting. I'm just going. I consider Primaris Marines, and I, they're not. Primaris Marines are not a, I, the way I see it. Primaris Marines are not a, a replacement for Space Marine armies. They're an addition to Space Marine armies. And what? Or because it's like, and also with all the new Primaris stuff, you have to have a Primaris army that's capable of sustaining itself uh, for the game. Because it's like, because you have entire chapters of Primaris Space Marines, and you have entire chapters of standard regular Space Marines. So, like, I know it's like saying that you're taking, that you're, I know people would be saying like, oh, that's basically like throwing, over, that's basically like, oh, you're going to throw away your game. You're basically throwing away your game. You're, you're throwing your games to, because you just want to be stick with it, with a, because you're a bit of a traditionalist. And I'm not a traditionalist. I try, I'm trying to add Primaris to my army. I just don't want it to overshadow other parts of my army. Where it feels like I'm, where I'm feeling, where I'm feeling like, oh, I'm gonna, these things are gonna be, are gonna make, are gonna be better than my good stuff. So, one of the major, so, so let's get to it, shall we? <clears throat> so one of the major highlights that came out a couple, of some days ago, was the addition of, was the uh, strategic reserves. Now, strategic reserves have, have was talked about a lot, especially for like like a lot, a lot. So, strategic, well, what the strategic reserves do is, is that you're basically what's happening is that your army can come in from the board. You can put you can, but the thing you, like like in previous editions, you can put your you can put bits of your army into strategic into a reserve, and they'll come on the board. But there was, but there were limitations. Though, like in the old editions, you could only have like um, your board. The stuff can only come on. Like if you're, it's like if you got tanks that are coming in from reserve, they can only come on from your from your board edge, and not anywhere else. And then you had rules that allow you to outflank. So okay, I can I can attack from the left board edge or the right board edge, and my uh, and or even into my opponent's board edge if I. If uh, they if I get get the perfect the, pro the proper role, but there was another ability. But what strategic reserves is is that throughout the game, you have you have a chance of like as you're like as your the your forces on the board are moving up every turn every battle round. You the ba the better your every battle round, your your chances get better at like okay I can attack from my opponent's board edge. Or I can, or like on the third turn, I can uh, go in from on my uh, opponent's bar today. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. So strategic reserves are based. So the way strategic reserves work is that they're based on a unit's power rating. Now a lot. Now I find this a good idea. 
Because what it is, because it's like, oh, you have a power rating of a one. So, no, um, set. And so it's like, you need to use command points to put units in reserve, which is good. A good idea, which is a good idea of command points. But what's also good is that using power ratings uh, helps keep the, I think helps keep the, uh, the system a little more organized. Cause it's like, that's a lot of, cause like if you're using like game points, that's just gonna be a lot of uh, calculations. So it says here, so it's like the strategic reserves use, it's the combined power rating of units placed into strategic reserves. And, and that will cost a command point. So, you know, one to nine, so like one command point, uh, so like for one command point, your strategic reserves have to be uh, between, sorry, I just, I've got a noisy person and I don't want to close this door, is that the, um, so a command point of one to nine, uh, I'm not command point, for, po for a power level of one to eight, sorry if I got loud, for a power level of one to nine, it's going to cost one, it's going to cost uh, one command point. So it's like, that's good. Meaning that you can put, so basically you can put two, one to two units into a uh, strategic reserve. You can put a dreadnought into strategic reserve for one command point or two. That's that's the thing about, that's the thing. Uh, with Space Wolf stuff, you we can use one command point to put infantry into outflank, to outflank your opponent. But if you, but what if you, but with strategic reserves, you can put things like your bikers, your tanks, your flyers, your dreadnoughts into strategic reserve. So it's like for ten, for a power level of a ten to nine, of uh, a ten to nineteen power combined uh, power level, you can put that. That's going to cost you two command points, and uh, that will. Uh, so the idea is, is that you can put. Uh, like say, like actually, this is a good. This is a good thing. So if you put have like a character on, um, or a very special unit that you don't want to get shot up in the first turn, then you're gonna want to put them into into strategic reserve, which is great. So like, I know a lot of players have had a thing have 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 had a hard time trying to run Logan Grimnar on Stormrider mostly they because he like he gets um, 12 points yes he he's a uh, 12 he has 12 wounds when and he so he's exempt from the uh, character protection rule so he can't really defend so like he, he can't lose him in a crowd because he's on a on his chariot so but they've made it but so far I think this solves a major problem so for like, cause he's a, a command point, cause his power level rating is 10, but just put him beside of a wolf and dreadnought. But here's the thing, give him a, put him a, have murder fang outflank with him or a wolf and dreadnought. That's a good, that, cause that can really open up a lot of doors. Cause why that, cause, cause like, oh, for two, like two command points. So basically like two command points, you're gonna be getting Two powerful units coming in from strategic reserve uh, further up the board and they'll and also they can re-roll charge rolls so you're so if that's that's a good that's a good option so it's like oh two command points you've got so basically two units for two command points that yeah you're not what so fill out that two command point requirements for uh, for a two power level requirement for the two command points and you're fine so, well, so it's it's and it's great, and all. But it does, but what it also says, like, okay, if units have like teleport strike with terminators or special built like special abilities with um, with a uh, what am I thinking of? Uh, Scout Wolf Scouts. You can place that. They can be placed into strategic reserves. The. Uh, that you can place, you can basically put, the, put them into strategic reserves without uh, command points, without well, the cost of command points. So here's the, so here's the way the strategic reserves work, how process goes throughout the battle. So battle round one, no strategic reserves come in. 
battle round too. Now you're gonna have to be careful because when it comes to these new rules, they sound they sound so mouthfillish that they just eh, you lose you you lose your train of thought. Battle round two set up wholly within six inches of any battlefield edge, not enemy battlefield edge or in enemy deployment zone. So that means so basically that means if you're uh you can't set up or so basically you set up wholly within six inches of any battlefield edge so basically you can't deploy until the third turn you can't deploy into your enemy's uh, location battle round three battle round three plus set up wholly within six inches of any battlefield edge not enemy battlefield edge so battle round three plus you can set up in your enemies deployment I think it says you can set up with wholly within of any battlefield edge not enemy battlefield edge so it says you can so basically you can set up in uh, your opponent's deployment zone I think uh, strategic reserve now cannot be set up within nine inches of enemy models strategic reserve cannot move units cannot move, make a normal move advance or fall back this turn strategic reserve units always count as having moved this turn a strategic reserve unit not given up not set up on the battlefield by the end of the battle counts as destroyed so make sure you have all so make sure you have all your stuff on the battlefield before otherwise goodbye mr terminator or goodbye my hq that i spent a considerable amount of points on so you can basically set up good ambushes and it's like oh you're gonna have a an interesting character is to have Logan Grimnar charge in. And it's like, oh, I'm going to go in. I'm going to have Logan Grimnar charge. But what I'm going to do in my second turn is I'm going to have is I'm going to have character uh, models that can uh, units that can um, take out entire characters. Uh, not character. Um, it's one of my usual things I say. Target priority. Take out anything that can that can cripple. So on a strategic level, take out anything that can that cripple your strategy in any way. Or be prepared for your opponent to shift the battle, to try to attempt to shift the battle in their favor. That way you can that way you can counter them and, and break down their, their defense. Or their counter charge or their counter assault. Now an interesting news now, now because of the they're, they're doing a, a preview in Dominus face off this weekend and they did us gave us a bit of an example of the, one of the new models from the from the uh, from the box which is called the Eradicator Squad. These are basically Primaris and Terminator not Terminators the Primaris uh, Devastators. So the Eradicator Squad is a squad. So in the box it's uh, the Eradicator Squad. The Eradicator Squad is a uh, power level five. They have there are three models in the squad likely going to be six when uh, when the when they get updated in codexes and also with likely with new uh with newer equipped weapons but they are equipped with what are called melta rifles so basically a melta rifle is it has the has the range of a multi melta but the capabilities of a melta gun so so basically it's a it's an assault multi melta now they now it's because now they're equipped with gravis armor so they have uh so sorry um i have a very annoying person here uh so the idea is, is that so an interesting thing with the eradicator squad is that they have a, a rule that's called total obliteration in your shooting phase you can declare this unit will only shoot a, it says here in your shooting phase you can only declare this you can declare this unit will only shoot a single target if you do select one target unit for this unit model for this unit while models in this unit can shoot twice this phase but they can only target that enemy unit so basically that's three start so basically that's th that's three uh that's six melter rifle shots at 24 inches so that's actually a perfect use of the of the um <laughs> excuse me of the uh, tactical reserve rule of the street of the strategic reserves rule so that puts uh, it's like oh you know what I'm gonna put um, erratic air squad they with they're within six that you know they can uh, deploy within uh, a period where they're um, 
Melter rifles are within half, are within 12 inches, because the Melter rifle has a range of 24 inches. So, so at 12 inches, you can kill. So at 12 inches, you're fire and firing it at uh, at full ballistic skill, three plus, at fire at three plus, that will destroy. And so like, and and hold like, you can take out a tank right there. That's not. It's, that's a lot of shots for that unit. So like when they're so like so like think about it like this you're having so think about it like this you're having six um, errat, uh, models in that in that eradicator squad that will make it incredibly powerful to deal with and especially because they're they're gravis armor they're tough and they're T five and they have three wounds so if you have a so if you have like a wolf priest or uh, taking care of that uh, making like healing them up or making sure that there is a a rune priest that provides uh, cover for that, that provides cover for them. Then these guys can do a lot of damage. Uh, so let's see. Oh, that's Black Library. Uh, who are a lot of these? A lot of the rules are kind of stretched into. Oh, here we are. Unit coherency. Now this one I haven't I haven't read. So you're gonna have to bear with me here. Let's see, unit coherency. A unit that has more than one model must be set up and finish and finish any sort of move as a single group, with all models within two inches horizontally and five inches vertically of at least one other model from their unit. While a unit has six or more models, all models must, must be in, must instead be within two inches horizontally. Hold on. A unit that has more than one model must be set up and finish any sort of move as a single group. With all models within two inches horizontally and five inches vertically, or at least one other model from with that, of at least one other model from their unit. While a unit has six, while a unit has six or more models, all models must be in must instead be within two inches horizontally and five inches vertically of at least two other models from their unit. This is called unit coherency. If a unit cannot end any kind of move in unit coherency, that move can not be made. Units are primarily moved in the movement phase, but they also but they can also be moved in the charge phase and the fight phase. Some rules allow you to add models to a unit during the battle. Such models must always be set up in unit coherency with uh, with the unit that are being. Oh, sorry. Um, sorry. Uh, it's a strange one. Some rules allow you to add models to a unit during the battle. During the battle, such models must always be set up in unit coherency with, and with the unit and with the unit they are being added to. Sometimes there will be insufficient room to set up all the models from for, from a unit, or it will be impossible to set up all the models so that they are in unit coherency. When this is the case, any models that cannot be set up are considered to have been destroyed. That is interesting. So, and also it's kind of like coherent, and also like the thing about, co there's a thing called here called co unit coherency check. Each player must now, each player must now remove models one at a time from any of the units in their armies that are no longer in unit coherency, as defined on page 198. So we gotta check 198. Until only a single group of models from this unit remains in play. And in unit coherency, the models removed count as having been destroyed, but they never trigger any rules that are used when a model is destroyed. Models removed because of this do not cause their unit to take another morale test. So basically, so the way I see it, so the way this is, is that if your model is removed from play, so I mean that you can, act, if you can break up a, uh, a unit, you can basically just like if your model cannot get within unit coherency then they are considered destroyed then those models get considered destroyed okay that's a very interesting ability right there <laughs> uh, I know there are a number of highlights but I'm feeling like like today is not feeling like a great day it's just too hot uh, I think I'll start. I think I'll get working on another video because I'm already almost at 20 minutes. So I feel like I ramble on a lot in this one, and there are going to be a number of breaks in this thing. So 
I'm just gonna so I'm gonna go uh, I'm gonna go work on something else. And uh, I hope you all had a good I hope you all like this video and I hope you all have a good one. And also stay cool, stay safe, and stay healthy. Happy hunting. <laughs>